All right, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the five aspects that we have and the five elements, and it dawned on me that there is a connection between the two. I was reading this book the other night, and it just kind of clicked, um, and I started thinking about it, and uh, I found that, yeah, these five aspects that we have perfectly relate to the five elements, so I'm going to share that with you guys. But with that, uh, before I say that, I need to be at least clear that, mm, of course, as soon as I start talk or go to speak, I burp, or I can't speak. Um, okay, so there is there is a there is three types of aspects in in uh, Vedic astrology. There are Rashi aspects, then there are planetary graha sputta drishti aspects, and then there's the tajika, which are like kind of the same as the planetary aspect, but used for a different purpose. So I'm not talking about Rashi aspects here, I'm talking about the planetary aspects, the um, degree-based aspects, um, trine, opposition, so forth. Uh, this is something that is common in both Western and Eastern systems of astrology, so it's really cool in that way. But what I think is neat is that Western astrology has lost the understanding of the five elements, and this is like, ooh, that's really tragic. Um, I'm really bummed at my Western culture for having forgotten this. Um, but they've kept the five aspects very well. And, um, you know, it's really it's really neat. It's really worth mentioning that the orbs of aspect, even that like William Lilly was giving um, in 18th century, are the same as the orbs that Neela Kanta gave in his Tajika Prajna book. Exact same orbs that can't be a coincidence. So these systems of Prajna and everything... We're definitely one, and I do think that in general astrology was like kind of one system with just different, slightly different styles of approach in ancient times. There's only one zodiac, you know? So I uh, I noticed this, and I was thinking, gosh, you know, this is really fascinating because they have this understanding of the aspects are so important, whereas in Vedic astrology, we don't, uh, that's just one factor amongst so many, you know? And then there's Rashi aspects um, and other things as well. Um, so yeah, I feel like in ancient times, like, I'm sure I'm not the first person to see this, but I, this is like something that no one else has ever told me. And I think I'm one of the first people in modern times to have made this connection between the Western and the Vedic traditions. So you have to know that you have to know the aspects of Western astrology simply, and you just, to get the best of this video, you might want to stop and watch another video that's very basic on that. I don't want to take all that time to do that. But there's conjunction, opposition, square, trine, and sextile. Okay? And those uh, conjunction, opposition are enmical, openly enmical in orary. And then the trine and sextile are friendly. And then the square is secretly uh, unfriendly. Um, I said all that right I hope so okay so then you have to know that the the elements of the planet so ether element is the first element that's Jupiter then you have the wind element Saturn then you have the fire element Mars then you get to the water element of Venus and then the earth element of Mercury and you'll have to just you know learn basics of Vedic astrology to know why that is that way um, but now that you finished doing that, or if you already knew that, you came back to this video, now you can really appreciate this understanding. So, uh, the first one, conjunction. A conjunction is called a UT, and that uh, even relates to the word union, um, and this it, conjunction is a union of two energies. That's as intimately connected as they can get. Think intimate. So this is Venus. This is the water element aspect. Things merging. Well, water just merges things together. You know, water blends and mixes and abides and just goes with the flow. And um, so that's what the water element is about. You know, union, um, desire, sexual intercourse, you know, wanting to merge with something is Venus. Um, you know, Venus rules the element or the taste, the, sorry, the the sense of taste. Every Each of the five plants rules a, a, a sense, you know. So 
Mars, for example, rules the, the sight, the sense of sight, vision, like opposing something, looking off at it over there. It, this is that way, but it's like distant. Venus rules the sense of taste, literally putting the thing inside of you and making it become a part of you and eating it and becomes merged with you to feel that thing. That's a Venus sense, taste. So that, you see what I'm saying? It's about conjunction, uh, union. And then again, of course, water, you need, you need water in saliva to taste. So it's kind of interesting for the water element. Okay, so then we get to the opposition, the fire element. This is related to Mars, an open opposition. See, these are this is an openly enmical aspect in Tajika. And, you know, yeah, it's like when you look off at something eye level, Mars is the eyes, the fire, the sight element again. And, you know, why do we call it opposition? When someone opposes you, they're your enemy, they're a problem you're dealing with. So that's a Mars thing. It's it, There's a confrontational energy with this aspect. So, of course, that's related to Mars. Then you get to the trine aspect. This is very interesting. You know, uh, on the deepest level, I think this relates to ether or the Akash or the Jupiter planet energy because a trine is the simplest geometric solid or shape or thing you can do with the lines to enclose a space. So enclosing the space, that's, that's what the ether and space, literally Akash means space or sky, the space element. So that which contains and holds things in. You know, Jupiter represents like storing um, wealth and knowledge and things and having space to do that. So trine uh, conveys dimension and... Um, it's the, it's the first thing that can enclose a space. And so I think that's why Jupiter relates to this element. And now we can see why, uh, you know, Jupiter, well, of course, because Jupiter rules the ninth sign naturally. He rules a trine from the natural ascendant Aries. But he, we also now see why he aspects full strength to the trines, to the fifth and the ninth, because that's uh, sort of his natural uh, geometric energy that, could, that fits with his... Uh, element. Then you get to the square aspect, and this relates to Earth, obviously, and Mercury. You know, Mercury is the Earth element. He's always productive. He's always struck, uh, got some organization, some structure. Um, he's always productive, and that's what they say about these square aspects. They can be secretly inimical. Mercury can be good or bad. He can be a cruel or a gentle planet, you know. So we can go both ways. So it's sort of secretly enmical. But what, what we say about this in Western is that that's always kind of productive. Like when planets are in angles aspecting, there can be something tough, but it can still be a productive energy is how that is seen to be. And so we could definitely know why that is true because if it's a mercurial aspect, well, Mercury is productive for everything in some way at all times. You know, that's Mercury's job. That's what he's about. Um... He's a little good at everything. You know, he may not be the best at something, but he's very multi-talented. But, you know, what's interesting is that Mars gives the full strength aspect to 90 degrees and not Mercury. Mercury doesn't have a special aspect, but Mars is considered to be born from the Earth. You know, his name is Kuja, which literally means born from the Earth. And then also Mars is exalted in an Earth sign, which is... 90 degrees from his own sign, Aries, and so, um, so I can see that. And this is sort of, this, this aspect should be the most confusing because Earth is the most mixed element. It's a mixture of all the other elements, you know, it's the last final one. So this one's supposed to be a little bit harder to see and was kind of harder for me to make the connection to, but it makes sense. Mercury, the planet that gives structure in the best form, like if Mercury... He's said to be most perfectly formed. Um, and so this 90 degree angle really conveys um, a sense of, of uh, structure, stability, something you can really rely on. And that's what Mercury is supposed to be about. Of course, Sun is also described as being square. It's not like I didn't know that, so you don't need to go and comment and blah, blah, blah. Oh, Sun is square. Sun doesn't rule five elements, so it's not involved in this. 
Um, and Mercury is the close, Mercury's signs are close to the sun. Mercury is the closest planet of the sun. So he's the closest one to take on that. He's the next to be king. He's the prince, the heir apparent to the throne, which is the sun's. Um, so that's good. All right, so now the air element is related to the sextile, the last aspect I haven't covered. And this is just a 60 degree aspect. And yeah, so this is related to the air element and this relates to Saturn. And so now we know why Saturn aspects the sextile to full strength. He aspects the third and the tenth from his places at full strength. He gives a full drishti there because his wind element is innately connected to this aspect. The real geometric reason why I think that is, is because a 60 degree angle is basically one part of an acute triangle. So it's again part of a triangle, but it's the smaller, the smaller part, so it's supporting the right angle, the 90 degree section. So the acute angle, like the Pythagorean theorem, a plus b squared equals c squared, by the way, that was actually, Pythagoras learned that on the banks of the Ganges. You can look into that if you want. Uh, that's documented. It's not a Greek thing. He learned that from ancient Indian texts, believe it or not. And Pythagoras spent time in India. And this is all, that's all just documented, so you can look, look elsewhere for that information. But um, the 30 degree, or sorry, the 60 degree aspect it's supportive to the 91, to the right angle side. So that's what this is about. The third house or the third, that side, like the third house from you is your friends and people that kind of can support you when you need the help, this or that. Um, the third is an air uh, sign, like from, so the third, the natural third sign is Gemini. There's this air quality to that aspect. And again, air signs are about socializing and supporting and relationships and air signs are the ones that maybe can't do the thing on their own but can get the support from other people and that can you know connect in that way through relationships like love or marriage is an obvious way that we get support from other people libra the sign of that is an air sign um where saturn gets exalted so saturn is Definitely, he, we know he has dominion over the wind and the air element, but he also, if you ask me, he has dominion over the sextile aspect, and there's a connection there. So, I hope you guys can uh, see what I'm saying here and appreciate this. Uh, this is more conceptual astrology, not as much technique-oriented, um, but I don't know. This just came to me the other night, and I wanted to share it. I think it's something true, and I think this may have been remembered and at some point in the past, but as time has gone on, we've lost a lot of information, and you kind of need to know Greek uh, knowledge and Indian knowledge to understand this uh, connection. So I hope you guys appreciate this. Take care.